So today I'm going to teach you about airbrushing. So first of all you need to find a stock. Now airbrushing is a good technique for if you want to create a fantasy piece or just even if the person has some blemishes and stuff you want to get rid of. For this I'm going to use this stock by Lisa Jen Stock which would make a really good fantasy dark creepy piece. So then download this and if you haven't already you need to open Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS3. Now if you copy it and you go to paste can already see the width and the height of the original picture is already set so you don't need to do anything you just click OK and then press Control and V oh wrong version it's not even finished I'm it. Copy. there we go then or you, well, you can go to edit and paste if you like but a bit long winded I use the keyboard shortcuts Control V now you need to duplicate this layer let's name it airbrushed and zoom in 100% now if there's any blemishes you want to get rid of then you can which I'm going to because this is going to be perfectly smooth and for this I'm just using the um, spot removal tool it's over here Got spot healing brush, spot healing brush tool, using the spot healing brush tool. It's this one here. Oh, sorry, I'm not very good at these things and rubbish at talking. Now you need to go to filter and blur, and then go to Gaussian blur. Now make it about seven pixels that should do. You can make it more or less if you like. It totally depends on the type of piece you're trying to make. And then click OK. And there you have it. Then go to Window and History. Now you need to tick this box here next to Gaussian Blur. And then click Control, Alt and Z to undo. And if you see that's gone, the Gaussian Blur has disappeared now. I'm going to zoom in all the way and go back onto my airbrushed layer, which isn't yet airbrushed, and you need to grab the history brush. I'm going to make this a little bit larger because I'm doing a larger spot. Now all you need to do is simply brush on, and as you can see, it smooths it out. Now once you've airbrushed, it's completely up to you what you're going to do, whether you want to paint the hair, or leave the hair as it used to be quite realistic if you just sort now I'm doing this quite quickly you, but you need to stay try and stay away from major details like creases in the face and stuff creases in the face that even the right term facial um, defining things like the edge of the nose and whatnot you don't try and go around these things because obviously if it's blurred it's going to lose it's quality. I'm trying to do this as quick as I can so yeah it's not the best and it's not very neat but and again try and keep away from these details. Also in the shadows you might want to avoid the shadows and use a smaller brush because obviously when shadows fall, if you blur the shadow it's not going to look right, is it? Go carefully going around the lips. Now if you want in a piece like this, afterwards you can use the dodge tool on the skin or you can use a paintbrush and paint the skin white have a play around with the settings and stuff obviously because you're not going to no leave it normally leave it normal leave it normal I would lower the opacity <sighs> Oops. now I've done these main bits so I can use a bigger brush also I'm doing this on a laptop and this is Windows. 
I think the alt key is the command key on the Macintosh, so if you're using the Macintosh you can still use the same. And this method will work in most other versions of Photoshop last time I checked. I've used it in CS2 and Photoshop 7, so you shouldn't have a problem in those programs. Now I need a smaller brush again. Too small. Also it's good to you should use a soft brush or a normal brush with the hardness turned all the way up right down. Simply because if you do a blotch and leave it, it's gonna look a mess. Okay, and I'm doing this quickly, so I'm going over places which you shouldn't go over, but yeah. <laughs> Now you can even do bits like the hand. Too small a brush for that. Get it done quickly. Even on the hand you've got these definitive parts that you want to avoid brushing over. You can brush around them and like on them but don't brush over them like that because then they lose their definition, if you know what I mean. I don't know if I talk a lot. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to leave it at that because I'm sure you get the idea of it. And then you have it airbrushed out. Now that's not very even, but if you look at the stock, it's not very even either. There's lots of different colours in the face. Now it's up to you if you want to, you know, make this black and white or change the colour of the skin or whatever. That's completely down to you. After all, it's your piece of work. If you look, then make the skin white, pale. Now this isn't how I would usually do it, but you can do it this way if you like. I personally think it makes it look a bit too chalky, but mm, whatever. <laughs> I'd normally grayscale out the picture and desaturate it, but. That's only if you want to make it paler anyway, which is completely your choice. I'd also um, burn the lips if you're going to do that because the lips will become rather pale. Again, it's your choice. And well, that's the basics of it really. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I'm sorry that my explaining is really really bad but I tried I said I would make an airbrushing tutorial so there you have it I hope it was at least of some use to you and let me see what you make